Well, finally, this is the fourth and concluding uh, videotape on how uh, to use the law and attorneys. And this is about some different options you may want to consider in, in uh, proceeding. That is what's going to be the structure of anybody's representation by an attorney. In all of these, the less that you use court, the better. Preferably, you should never be in a courtroom. Preferably, you should never have that alienating experience of being standing across the aisle from each other. You should not be using attorneys, uh, even if your co-parent is, you should not be using an attorney who's adding uh, fuel to the fire by firing off uh, abrasive and attacking and disparaging correspondence. But in any event, here are some different ideas about di uh, options that you probably have not heard about, but I think they may help you. One option is the traditional view of each of you being represented an attorney by an attorney, but remember to use attorneys that are going to be interested in your true best interest. That is, in giving your children a wonderful world to live their one and only childhood, keeping your costs down. I think there's absolutely nothing wrong. And take a look at the sample attorney retainer agreements that we have attached to our memo about this. Uh, keep in mind, you have the right to say, I'm only paying for this number of hours of work, and I'm only paying for these items of work by an attorney. I'm not interested in court. I'm not interested in, in um, attacking uh, my co-parent and so forth. So each of you can use a traditional attorney and in this traditional setting, but make sure that you unbundle. And you, the term is unbundling. That is, we, I don't want... Every, I don't want you doing everything that comes to mind because you wake up and you decide, hey, I've got to go, go do something uh, aggressive in Charlie's case, so I'm going to go file something. You're in charge of this. You have the right. In the law, it's called determining the objectives of the representation. And it's your right to say, these are the objectives. I want to move our family peacefully to a better place. I want to preserve the chances of reconciliation if, if that's possible. And even if we're not interested in today, I don't want to do any damage to any future which we might, ha we might have about that. We want to return responsibility for decision making to the parents. We want to protect our kids. And we want just technical assistance on you know, what are the you know, forms that we need to file and so forth. So that is one option. Use a traditional two attorneys, one for each parent, but make sure these are attorneys who by their personal inclinations and professional standards and ethics and by your retainer agreement with them are confining their work to those things that will be constructive and helpful to you and your family. Another option that you can use is mediation. Mediation is a process where the people make their own decisions and they're using an independent person, an impartial person, the mediator, to sit as a uh, sort of a guardian of the process or somebody who moves the, uh, the uh, um, discussion along. You can do this whether or not you have attorneys. You can do this uh, with your attorneys there if you do have attorneys or your attorneys can remain in their offices and you can come to an agreement or you can come to a tentative agreement and that you take back to your attorneys. But a mediator basically is uh, sometimes called the guardian of the process or this is a person who um, uh, helps you to know, look, this is what generally other couples have found and the law may think the issues are uh, that you need to resolve. Things like how are you going to shield the kids from conflict? How are you going to make child-related decisions together? How are you going to uh, handle the financial expenses uh, of the divorce? How are you going to, of, of opening two households and so forth? What are you going to do about child support? How do you divide property? So the mediator can bring these uh, areas to your attention and then you get to make your own decisions about those things. Mediation is in more and more use and it's a, it's a good reflection, a good reflection of how your interests, your remain mutual. Did you have an interest, 10 minutes before the decision to separate, did you have an interest in not wasting $50,000 or 100 or whatever, wasting any money on a, on a uh, useless lawsuit or an unnecessary lawsuit? Well, of course you did. Do you have that interest now? Absolutely you have that interest because you have all the financial expenses of the separation. 10 minutes before the decision to separate, did you have an interest in, in looking out for the best interest of your kids and giving them a good world to live their one and only childhood? Well, that goes double now because there's now this, this slice, there's this scratch, there's this wound in their world and you need to work doubly hard to make sure that they uh, have a good uh, childhood. Did you have an interest in, in uh, making sure that your relationship uh, it, as co-parents is as healthy as possible? Well, it goes double now because now you're going to be making decisions under separate households and you may need to actually improve the communication, the child-related communication between you. So all the major interests that you had before, you still have now. And mediation can be an excellent resource for uh, executing on that ability to remember those mutual interests and to come to good decisions in service of those. 
A second option that you can use if you have a, a, an attorney that both you and your co-parent have good confidence in is an attorney for just one of you and the other to be unrepresented. And uh, there's actually an attorney in our community who says, look, let me just tell you, if you're interested in this, I don't need, even need to know here at the very beginning, let me just, uh, which one of you wants me to represent you and which one of you might go without an attorney. Let me tell you what my opinion is about one reasonable way to resolve this. And I'm not taking either side. Let me just tell you what the law is. Let me tell you what the courts might do if they got their hands on this. And I hope you won't go to court. This good attorney would be telling you. And let me tell you if each of you wants to be kind of generous with the other, then here's some deviations that you might come up with. So you can get an opinion from an attorney without either of you uh, saying at that moment which, which of you might be represented by that attorney. Just have that attorney give an opinion about the particular, uh, uh, how, how the jurisdiction's law looks at uh, particular items. And then you can decide if you want to use that attorney. You can also decide in whose, uh, in whose name that attorney will make an appearance. Um, there are more and more people realizing that, uh, that the issues in, in divorces are 90% personal and only about 10% legal. And if we can uh, limit the attorney's work to those things, uh, they might be better off. And this might be another way by which to do that. Another option that you can use is to use a mediator and without your having attorneys. You certainly can use a mediator if you're using a traditional approach and you both have attorneys. But you can use a mediator while you are not being represented. And what you can agree uh, to do with your mediator and with each other is that if a legal issue comes up, the mediator will retain a lawyer. It could be a lawyer that both of you agree on. But the mediator actually is the person that uh, is hired by the uh, attorney. You would be paying for the attorney's time. And the attorney would be giving an opinion just on the specific legal issue or legal issues that you present to that attorney. This can keep the attorney's fees down. And it can also ensure that there's independence. The attorney, in other words, doesn't need to know who you are. The attorney is not representing one person over the other. We have a, a, a local attorney by the name of uh, Spence Walton, who's a brilliant guy. He's a former president of our state bar association and he does, uh, um, uh, he's made this statement, I can predict, he says, I can predict within 5% of how our judges are going to decide any financial issue in a case. That includes child support, division of property, division of debt, uh, division of, of uh, companies, uh, stock, and so forth, even in closely held corporations. Well, if that's really true that an attorney can say, I can do this within 5%, why are we getting into 50000 and 100000 and $500,000 divorces arguing over these things? Let's go to somebody and get an opinion. And, and of course, this attorney uh, just gives an opinion about what the courts will do. And and that can be one piece of data that you can use. You're not confined by that. You may choose to be more generous, okay? Uh, I, some of the most, uh, the best divorces I see, people continue to be generous with each other for the sake of the kids and the relationships and their joint wish that the, that the family move forward, even if it's as a family under two households. But you can think about this option using one mediator and let that mediator be your conduit to get legal information that can help you reach agreements. And believe it or not, another option that you have is to use no attorneys. Almost every state has uh, forms on its uh, state court websites that show uh, how you, what the pleadings are that you need to file. If you do not have a large estate, or even if you have a large uh, estate by that, I mean a amount, large amount of property, whether it's physical property or savings and retirement accounts, even if you do have those things, you can still work out in most cases uh, these issues by yourself. We have more and more people representing themselves and sometimes that's for reason of finances. People just don't have the money to hire attorneys. But also there are cases where people just say, you know what, we have more trust uh, that we love our kids and that we, uh, we can act as responsible, cooperative adults uh, without too much professional assistance and without attorneys coming in. I'm an attorney. I'm not attacking attorneys. I do believe that uh, uh, there are attorneys in every community who try to do a good job and try to avoid uh, sort of the uh, adversarial instincts that we were taught uh, about in law school and that maybe we had even as part of our reason for wanting to go to law school. We tend to be kind of a competitive lot and I, I want you to be careful about that because your family doesn't need that, probably. Your family doesn't need mom and dad in competition or more conflict. The, the, conf the personal conflict that you've already had has maybe brought you to this point, but you don't want to add legal conflict to it. But in, more, in every jurisdiction in which I've spoken, um, uh, whether it's on mediation or on our websites or on our 
plans uh, and ideas about an overall cooperative system of family law, the judges and the lawyers are all reporting there are more and more people representing themselves. Again, sometimes for reasons of finance, sometimes for reason that they just think we can do better on ourselves. You know, the best doctor is not going to be one who says, you know, the more I operate on you, the healthier you're going to be. <laughs> the best doctor is going to be one that says, look, what can I do to educate you about, as mine is always trying to tell me, about a little more weight loss, a little more uh, exercise, a little less stress and um, in, in our lives. And the more that we take responsibility for our own uh, medical health, the, the better off we are. The same thing here. The more that you can take responsibility, if you feel that you can do it, that your circumstances are safe enough and that you're um, uh, and that there's enough fairness and enough goodwill in your circumstances. If you want to try representing yourselves, there's nothing to say that you can't succeed at that. A final option that you uh, can consider is one that I'm not as excited about as I was a few years ago. We have uh, uh, a process called collaborative law and uh, capital C, capital L. and. Uh, this was a uh, process that was uh, developed uh, first by Stu Webb in 1995, and I think Stu's motivations were good and true and pure, uh, but I don't much care for some of what's happened in this field. Basically, what collaborative law says is that we will have a no-court proceeding. We'll have, an, if, in the case of a divorce, this will be a no-court divorce, and the two attorneys and the two clients sign a four-way agreement. All four of them signed it, said, we're just not going to go to court. If the parents do go to court, if anybody files anything, the two attorneys must withdraw and can never represent the people again. That's the basics of the agreement, those two things, that with these two attorneys there will be no court proceedings. And second, if anybody does file anything, these two attorneys must withdraw and we'll, we'll have to go find other attorneys. My quarrel with collaborative law is that it's become so full of complications that it violates the very thing that it's that its genius started with, I think. The genius was this huge unbundling. We're not going to use court. But there are more and more collaborative practitioners, in my opinion, who are giving unnecessary services to clients. And we have uh, people running up twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar bills for their divorces because the attorneys are doing so many other things, and they're and many of them are not getting over their old adversarial instincts, and they're bringing a lot of law in, a lot of argumentation. I don't believe that lawyers, under whatever banner they are practicing, are going to save your family. I believe that you are, and your love for your children will be your light out. Your love for your children is a stronger problem-solving tool than any attorney can bring, better than any mediator can bring, any judge, any counselor. You can use those services, but I would say less and less would be better. The more that parents rely on themselves, the better the outcomes are going to be, and of course, the more financially survivable uh, they are going to be. Uh, I think that we professionals need to learn this a little bit, and I'm, I'm sharing with you this, this secret. In the long run, we are going to disappear. The professionals are going to disappear, and it is going to be up to you. It's going to be up to you, and thankfully it's going to be up to you, to love your children enough to give them that good world to live their one and only childhood, to notice their losses from the family's difficulties. And if it is a divorce, notice there are huge losses that already come from that. Even if divorces are done perfectly, even if they are done perfectly, there are, uh, the problems for the kids include always being separated from one parent, separated from mom whenever they're reunited with dad, then separated from dad every time they're reunited with mom, feeling they, they were somehow responsible for this, that if they'd been better kids, and then wondering what else in their lives can go wrong. It is parents' awareness of those losses and wish to minimize those and not certainly to add to them by adding any personal conflict or legal conflict on top of it that saves the day. So I'm not as excited about collaborative law as I used to be. If you're thinking about using collaborative lawyers, I would certainly do the website work, take it to them and say, can you give us a, a divorce like this and can you keep it within a reasonable cost? We don't want endless meetings talking about the collaborative law agreement. We want this something to be survivable, economical, and, and in the service of peace for ourselves and our kids. Well, uh, this uh, four-part uh, video is uh, our best attempt at giving you some guidance on how you want to use the law and lawyers. Be careful consumers. Be wise consumers. It's unlikely that the $200,000 divorce is better than the $2,000 divorce. It's unlikely that uh, the more uh, that 
that you're involved in adversarial proceedings, the better off the family is going to be. It's almost, almost guaranteed to be uh, true in the opposite, that the more that there is legal conflict added on top of personal conflict, that there are going to be difficulties. There are lawyers in almost every community who I think are trying to make things better, and I, I uh, hope that if you choose to use an attorney, you'll be very, very careful about using the website uh, work, taking uh, your commitments to that attorney, having a discussion about saying, this is what will be good for the family. Can you help us do this? If you can't, that's fine. I'm going to use somebody else. We need the public to lead the way, to help lead the way uh, to better, better outcomes for families. And um, I hope you can be part of that, both for the sake of our society, but mostly today for the sake of your children, your family, and yourself. I wish you the very best.